Now, as we have organized Noor Berlin into industry verticals, we thought we start with the most mysterious one first, Internet of Things. Neil, Niall, tell us about everything, which is the name of your company, which looking at what Internet of Things is, is probably a great name to pick. Thank you very Please. much. Good morning, everybody. Let me get my slides up. So something profound is going on in the world. Um, digital technology is finding its way into every conceivable type of product. The innovation that's been taking place over the last 20 years, really, in terms of device technology, um, all sorts of different forms of printed sensor, embedded computer, and so on, has passed some key tipping points. When it was costing $50 to put an embedded computer into something, we weren't going to get very many things having embedded computers in them. Now it costs $1.50 to $3 to put an embedded computer into something. When it was costing you know, $2 or $3 to put some printed electronics onto a, a product that, they were, that wasn't going to get into too many products, now it costs between 10 and 20 cents to put uh, printed electronics onto a fast-moving consumer product. So we have a revolution of the physical products of the world becoming uh, digital entities, becoming digitally enabled. And we're talking about a lot of things. I can get my next slide up. No, I can't. Can I get my next slide? From the, there we go, okay. So we don't have to wait around for people to start making products. Uh, consumer manufacturers make about three and a half trillion products every year um, uh, in the world today. Um, and you know, based upon current uh, trends of deployment and adoption, um, about 800 billion to a trillion of those products made and shipped per annum will be carrying a form of digital capability by the end of this decade. That's a lot of things generating a lot of data and a lot of different form factors. And this analysis is across the primary verticals of the consumer product market. If we add industrial uh, product categories onto that, we add about another, uh, uh, another two or 300 billion units of, 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 of product uh, coming into the market with digital capability by, uh, by the end of this, de this decade. And that drives a fundamental change shift for the manufacturers and sellers of products. Because historically, when a manufacturer made a product and shipped it into the world, they knew a lot about it at the point of manufacture. They, knew, they know very little about it after, after they release it into the world. Maybe they have a maintenance and support reach. Maybe they have some market research insight that is getting some, some uh, very low fidelity feedback on what is happening to their products. But we're moving into an environment now where we have full instrumentation of the products that we have deployed in the world. We're turning our physical products into digital assets. And that, uh, that, that drives a fundamental new data management requirement for the enterprise, um, because now the physical products that you make and sell are becoming uh, nodes of service delivery and nodes of data generation in real time. And we're talking about hundreds of millions, billions of, of units of product for individual product manufacturers. And because they've become uh, digital assets uh, operating in real time, they, they need to be integrated with you know, the rest of the enterprise's uh, infrastructure, but they need to be integrated with the, with, the, with, with the application space that is being provided around those products. So product manufacturers now need to operate their products as, uh, as digital assets um, and to leverage an enormous amount of data that's flowing from and about these products. So really what you can see starting to happen is that as products become digital things, they become digital entities within the web. And we've got a whole new class of, uh, of content, really, that is starting to participate uh, within the web. Um, so we think about this in terms of uh, identity, really. Uh, how do physical things, specifically physical products, become digital entities on the web? And more importantly, how do they participate in the digital ecosystem, the application ecosystem that is the web? And that's the purpose of what our company is focused upon, really around a vision of everything uh, being a part of the web, everything having a digital identity within the web. This, this concept of, uh, of identity is a, a fundamental franchise that underpins uh, um, you know, a lot of the way the internet works today. You know, VeriSign built a multi-billion dollar business managing the, uh, the secure identity of web servers. We don't think about it too much. 
Uh, but you know, there's a couple of billion dollars a year of, of, uh, of revenue associated with the provision of SSL certificates for web servers. And e-commerce and the entire infrastructure of digital transaction would not work without that capability in place. Human identity is obviously being digitized in the form of social network identities, LinkedIn profiles, CRM uh, identities, and so forth. And that drives a pretty valuable application ecosystem. And what we're seeing now is that physical product items are becoming digital entities within the web. Their, their identity, their mediation, how they transact and interact with other applications and services needs to be managed and facilitated. We don't need to wait for people to make products. Our, our fundamental opportunity driver here is simply the adoption of digital technology uh, into those products and therefore driving uh, the requirement for identity management. What my company does is provide the technology to, to allow a product's uh, data uh, to be managed in the cloud, its identity to be mediated on the web um, through what we call an active digital identity, really the cloud half of any individual physical product item. Um, and we see that as a crucial enabler to, 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 to the Internet of Things, or maybe more, more correctly, the Web of Things, how uh, uh, products are able to uh, share their data and transact with the rest of the application space. Now, consumer product brands are, are uh, applying IoT uh, and these technologies really in, in three pretty down-to-earth application uh, use case areas, um, you know, controlling and operating products that, that are fully connected, uh, delivering consumers, uh, consumer services directly through their products, because once a product becomes uh, a, a digital entity, it becomes a point of direct interaction with the consumer, whether that be for e-commerce or loyalty or, or, or what have you, service delivery. And finally, for tracking and analytics. There's a huge amount of new data that we can generate uh, in the supply chain, for example, to be able to follow products as they move, as they move through the channel. So you know, practical examples of this, you know, iHome, one of our customers, is a, is a, uh, you know, a, a pretty well-known consumer electronics manufacturer. Very simple device here being a smart plug. But the objective with this product is to be able to have it operate as a, as a real-time 24 by 7 smart device uh, that you're able to control um, in your home or out of your home. But you know, further, it's a product that needs to be connected into the rest of the ecosystem. Um, it needs to not just in, uh, operate with an individual app that a company like iHome might want to provide to its consumers. It needs to work with the rest of the ecosystem. Maybe I want to use my Nest thermostat to control my, my iHome plug. Maybe I want to use my SmartThings app or my HomeKit app to be able to control uh, my, my smart plug. And so we facilitate how that product is able to interact with those other ecosystems on a real-time basis. I talked about direct-to-consumer services. Um, Coca-Cola is one of our customers. They think of their Coke products. Literally, I'm talking about everything from cans of Coke, bottles of Coke, and other, other branded products within their portfolio as an owned media asset, effectively. The ability for a consumer to interact with the brand uh, triggered by or driven through the product. And there's no better loyalty token to qualify a consumer than, than the evidence that they've actually got a product uh, in, in their hand. So here in Germany, for example, there are multiple experiences that consumers can interact with with Coke simply by pointing their phone at a, at a, at a Coke can, getting a dynamic personalized experience. From Coke's perspective, they're de-anonymizing that consumer relationship. They're narrow casting the, uh, the efficiency of their, of, of their investment in content and reward and so forth, influence towards the consumer. Um, last year, we deployed uh, uh, digital applications uh, across about 3 billion units of Coke here, here in Europe. So this stuff is happening at scale. And lastly, tracking and analytics in the supply chain, um, the ability to know where products are going in the world, uh, the ability to authenticate products as they move through the supply chain. The world's counterfeit economy is a $1.3 trillion annual economy. Um, parallel trade, uh, you know, parallel importing, these are huge problems affecting almost every major consumer product manufacturer in the world. And so the ability to detect, uh, authenticate products and detect where a product is, compare where it's supposed to be, uh, these are the kind of challenges that brands like Diageo, another, another one of our customers, uh, are, are, are applying IoT towards. 
So when we think about the Internet of Things, we often think about sort of you know, flying cars and, and very futuristic application cases. But these use cases are very real, happening at very real scale right now, and are practical applications of how the digitization of, of products is changing business models. We provide a, a platform as a service, enterprise class platform as a service. The, the critical issue in this is both ecosystem connectivity and being able to deal with extraordinary scale, billions of products, you know, massively variant data models, uh, you know, rigorous security and access control. The, the irony is that in a well, world where you want to maximize sharing, you need to be able to maximize control. And, uh, and, and you know, very dependable application performance. Latency is a, is, a, is, a, is a critical performance characteristic. Very briefly, our company is, is now just coming up on five years old. We're a team of 50 people operating between London, New York, and San Francisco. We, we work with uh, predominantly global consumer product brands. Our existing customer base make, uh, make about a trillion uh, units of product per annum uh, between them today um, and uh, involve some of, the, some of the largest brands uh, in the world. We're a, we're a venture-backed business with financial and, uh, and corporate investors, Cisco and Samsung, uh, amongst our investor base, financial investors here in Europe and, uh, and, and in the US. From a performance perspective, you know, as of this morning, about 398 million active digital identities operating in our platform. Uh, these are products that are out there with, uh, with transacting digital identities in the world. So, you know, Last year, as I said, we deployed uh, services across uh, upwards of 3 billion uh, units of, of, of products. Um, you know, we're a business that is a, uh, a data management business at the end of the day. We're managing the digital identity of products, the data from and about those products on, a, on an ongoing uh, uh, subscription and transactional basis for our customers, driving a pretty good gross margin. Uh, and we believe that's a very sustainable business model for us over the, over the longer term. So just to wrap up, Something you know, profound really is going on, and the nature of what a product is is, is changing. Um, we're used to products being contained to their physical value proposition. You know, my bike is, is its physical value proposition. What's happening is that physical products are becoming augmented with digital capability, and I believe we will see products that are conceptualized as inherently digital. We're seeing this with the Teslas, obviously, of the world, but we'll see this with more and more uh, products and some examples you'll see today. And in this digital world, a product is a combination of that physical capability, um, its digital intelligence that allows it to dynamically shape its experience towards the consumer, um, and its connectivity into the rest of the digital ecosystem. It is, its value proposition is, is you know, as a function of Metcalfe's law, the square of, uh, of what it else it can be connected to. And, uh, and that's really the vision we have and what we're facilitating as a business. Thank you very much. My 10 minutes are up.